What's up guys, it's The Real Deal. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we are going to be checking out Gizmark the Terrible. This is the first mythical champion I have pulled on the account as a free-to-play player. I mean, I was blown away when I pulled this guy. Um, I quite like the way he looks. Like, he's got... It sort of gives me, like, World of Warcraft vibes. Be yeah, a pretty cool uh, look and... We'll also look at his uh, second form as well. Yeah, like just screams World of Warcraft. Loving his like totem pole. Um, looks sick. So Gizmark. Uh, I'll go through the build first and then we'll look at his abilities. So we've actually got two pieces of Slayer on him. Lethal and Stone Skin. I think there's still quite a lot of work to still do on him. Um, so... I'll go through every single piece. This is pretty solid, actually. This is a great piece for any um, arena um, HP nuka. I need to um, get some rolls in speed on in that, though. That's a very nice piece with that well, kind of like a triple roll in crit damage. Nice bit of lethal going on. Uh, crit damage on the gloves. And we've also got that ascension in crit damage as well. Um, again, shame there's no speed there though, and no speed here as well. Uh, HP percentage on the chest with a triple roll in crit rate. I mean, one of the things that's great about this champion though is that he's so fast, you can get away with that speed. Um, got speed boots, would love for these to be HP percentage, um, but I just, just, I just don't have enough lethal. Um, it's a real shame because I could, if I could just get it. Um, on these two pieces, I could probably swap these boots out. Um, if as long as I had like HP percentage, uh, subs in speed and crit rate. Um, you can see that I've got um, ascension of speed as well. I've decided to keep it because you spend so much um, like powder trying to hit those right sub stats that it's just not worth it for that extra HP. I think I'm happy to keep that speed. Um, HP percentage, I mean, this isn't a, a god tier ring, unfortunately we did get rolls in attack percentage, but, you know, you just want HP and then subs in HP and defense as well. Uh, amulet, you just want crit damage, ideally with just rolls in HP, um, and I run out of, uh, dust, um, for, for this, so we need to get that, is it? 15%, I think it's 15% extra crit damage we need to get. But yeah, we'll work on that. Need, yeah, I've run out of just... Yeah, I need to do some Phantom Shogun farming. But yeah, get some HP more on this as well. But this, this is a god tier um, piece. Like, insane. Lovely, lovely stats. So, total stats. We have got 85k HP. Um, and he's... you got to think as well, he's not awakened. So that is a massive, that is a huge amount of stats. Um, then we've got 31k defense, 238 speed, a little bit overkill on the crit rate, and then 295 crit damage. Again, he's missing that 15 from the necklace, and then um, is it, it's 40 from, your, from a four-star awakening. So we're missing a huge amount of crit damage. So that would bump up his damage massively. Um... Yeah, so a blessing, what would I go for him? I know a lot of people, for Arena, people love to use Incinerate on him. I I just feel like it's a bit of a waste, to be honest. Because um, usually if someone's using Stone Skin, that means they're going to be using Sheep as well. And more than likely, they're going to have a cleanser in the team. So I just feel like it's a wasted, it's just wasted. Um, you can use it. Um but I just feel like it's not the best option. If you're going PvE, um, I would say Nature's Wrath is really, it's insane for Hydra and especially for Gizmark. Um, so that'd be like my number one choice for PvE. For PvP, um, I think Soul Reap or Warden of the Fallen would be my next two go-tos. So Soul Reap, obviously that's going to help you with your, with your damage. And I'm just going to double check it. Oh, yeah, because crit damage is different, so slightly more. 
So it's 45%. Oh, extra crit damage as well. Nice. Um, and then Warden of the Fallen just makes you have better survivability. Just depends how you want to play it. So let's break down the skills. So first off, we've got Let Me At Em. Um, this is a great buff. So it goes across the team. We're getting crit damage. We're getting crit rate and speed. And then we also get an extra turn. So then you've got like the option to use Flame of Resentment. Uh, sorry, Resentment. So this just basically we can, um, wait, before attacking increases the duration of all HP burn. Nice, by one turn. Then instantly activates any HP debuffs for each enemy. This effect cannot be resisted if the champion's crit rate is 100% or higher. Finally, Increases the duration of all debuffs on the enemies by one turn and then places decreased speed debuff for two turns. These effects cannot be resisted if this is a critical hit. That is a really, really nice ability, especially for Hydra. Decreased speed is amazing for Hydra. It just slows down the heads. Um, they can't really do anything and it just means you can get loads of extra turns in. It means that you can cycle through your abilities faster. So if you want to throw out like provokes or, you know, you've got a provoke on a three turn cooldown if you're throwing out slows it means that you can sort of cycle back around and land that provoke and then a1 magma hurl attacks one enemy increases the duration of hp uh, debuffs on the target by one turn if the target is not under a hp burn a debuff decreases the duration of two random buffs on the enemy by one turn instead these effects cannot be resisted if the attack is critical so this guy is completely built around having crit rate yeah. then attacks all enemies under hate not under hp burn debuff except the initial target and decreases the duration of two random buffs on all enemies enemy hits by one turn this effect cannot be resisted again if his attack and this is based on attack so um yeah kind of interesting that he has all of that on his on his first form if you go into the second form you see his damage is based off HP. So <laughs> it's, it's difficult. I've built him as a HP nuka. Um, I've not tried him in his original state as attack. So I didn't even I didn't even notice that to be honest. So that is quite interesting. And oh, we actually skipped his passive as well. So his passive, Spark of Anger. Before the start of this champion's turn, places a HP burn debuff on all enemies for two turns. Occurs once per round. Again, cannot be resisted. If the champion's crit rate is 100% or higher. Also, before the start of the champion's turn, has a 50% chance of placing a HP debuff on enemies for one turn. This effect cannot be resisted. What? That's just the same thing? I don't know. That's just the same thing. I don't understand it. But anyway. So, second passive Burning Judgment. We ignore 15% of the target's defense. If this champion's HP or the target's HP is equal or greater to the 50%. If this champion's HP or the target's HP is less than 50, we ignore 25% of the defense instead. That is nice. So he's got built-in um, ignore defense, which is just, you know, it's one of the best things you can do to get more damage. Ignores block damage, shield buffs if the enemies are under HP burn. And inflicts 20% more damage. To enemies not under a HP burn debuff. Nice. So the Ungodly Fury, which is his A3, places a pain link debuff on a target enemy for two turns. This debuff cannot be removed, resisted, or blocked. So let's just have a quick look. Can we get some more info, please? So um this is something that the the Hydra does to us. So I'm actually not too familiar with how it works. So the pain link debuff causes the affected champion to receive a percentage of all damage received by the enemy who placed this debuff. So the enemy receives 100% of the damage inflicted to them. The amount of damage received depends on the enemy who placed the debuff. If it was the... Oh, this is so much reading. So that is a lot to take in and it's a bit complicated. Um, if a champion is under both pain link debuff and block damage buff, they will not receive any damage from the pain link debuff. 
The pain link debuff can be blocked or removed and can have its duration increased to three. But the amount of damage received depends on the enemy. Da, 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 da. If it was the head of suffering, cause its champion to receive 15% of the damage received. The okay, so how pain link works is if I place it on the enemy, every time someone does damage to Gizmark, that damage will be reflected to the enemy. So um, it does do a decent amount of damage on Hydra. Um, in Arena, I don't feel like it does too much, but maybe I'm wrong. We can test that out today. Um, so yeah, he does place uh, Pain Link, and it is a protected debuff as well. Cannot be resisted or blocked. Uh, when calculating the damage inflicted by the Pain Link debuff, 75% 75 of the attacker's skill multiplier is reflected. The damage inflicted by the pain link debuff will ignore 100% of the target's defense. That's nice. That's a lot of damage. Also places taunt buff and unkillable buff on the champion for two turns. Finally places a ally protection buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. This is, again, this is good for Hydra. Um, but the problem is with my build, I've got no resistance. So um, I guess that's one of the things about him as well, that he doesn't need accuracy because everything's built around his HP burn. So you can just, you know, stack resistance on him. Um, to be fair, when I was using him, it was getting stolen a lot. Um, but yeah, Taunt, Taunt is an interesting one. Taunt, um, obviously it can be amazing for Hydra if you go double Taunt. For the arena, it can be useful if you're going against single target champions, like maybe you're like a Rotos um, or a champion that has like one AOE ability and then they're stuck with their single target because when they've got an AOE ability, Taunt does nothing. But when they've got just a single target ability, of course you can just tank everything and just soak it up. So A2, we've got Kaboom! Attacks to enemies before attacking, places a 60% drop defense uh, debuff on all enemies for two turns. This debuff cannot be resisted if the target's under HP burn. Places an extra hit on enemies under HP burn. Grants an extra turn if this attack kills an enemy. Damage is based off HP and defense. So this is what I like to do. So I will, you always start off in this form. I like to transform straight away and open up with his Kaboom. It does smack and you'll see that later. It does hit really, really hard. And then his A1, um, to Totemek uh, Vengeance, attacks one enemy. This, If this champion's HP or the initial target's HP is equal to or lower than 50%, attacks all enemies instead. Nice. So say you've got two targets. One's got 75% HP and they're like a squishy nuka. And then you've got a support champion who has 50% or less HP. Go for the support because you're going to hit everyone, including the new cat, anyway. So it just makes sense. Increasing the duration of two random debuffs on the target by one turn. If attacking all enemies, increases the duration of two random debuffs on all enemies by one turn instead. This effect cannot be resisted if the if the attack is a hit, a crit. If it's a crit, it can't be resisted. And, you know, he obviously, we're going for full crit rate. So, Masteries... Um, pretty standard build. We're going in the offense tree. Um, we're going for crit rate. We're going for crit damage. Usually, I take Ruthless Ambush and Opportunist, but um, he hits pretty hard, and I feel like Whirlwind of Death is great on him because we're going to get faster. It's going to give us more turns, more speed, and Cycle of uh, Violence as well is great because he does absolutely slap. Uh, single out for extra damage. Bring it down for extra damage. Uh, kill streak over methodical because um, he's going to get kills in arena. So it just makes sense. And then Helm Smasher as well. Uh, defense, we've gone into uh, Blast Proof. Uh, we've got Resurgence, which is going to help with survivability. Uh, delay on death as well. And then we're taking two lots of um, counterattacks. I'm a big fan of taking Retribution with deterrence it deterrence is great as well i feel like it's a really underrated mastery 
there's a very good chance you're going to get counterattacked with it. So just it it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, you could go in the support tree if you wanted to take um could, lasting gifts because he does throw out some buffs. So that would extend those. Or you go master hexer and sniper just to you know help land your debuffs and extend them as well. So that's also a good option for PvE, but I feel like this is the best build for PvE and PvP. Um, I mean, you could go, you could mix it up a little bit for PvP by taking Improved Parry. It's one of my favorite uh, masteries, but don't feel like it's 100% necessary. And because we've got that built-in unkillable buff, it, it just makes sense. It just makes sense. So um, let's just... Yeah, we'll talk about him. Yeah, let's just let's hop into Arena. I'm going to find some games and we'll talk about him in PvE and we'll talk about him in Arena. All right, guys. So we're currently in gold two for Tag Arena. I've been lazy. I know I could push to gold three, but we're not going to today. But actually, I'm going to go against this team with Gizmark um, and just sort of show some of the issues that he does have. So one of them is that because of Polymorph, he can get countered by Stone Skin and Polymorph, and it happens a lot. Um, so I'm only bringing my Hegemon that does have um, Sheep. Okay, got lucky, didn't land. Um, but you can see this guy's also running the um, is it incarcerate incineration. So I mean, that's taken a big chunk out of my Hepfrak, and that looks like it might even pop off. But this should be like an easy fight for me. Hopefully, we don't fail against. I can't remember his name. Gorgrid. It's been so long since I've seen him. But yeah, easy fight. Uh, I'll skip the next one. We'll move on to the third fight where I am going to use uh, Gizmark against the enemy. Bam, we lost that second one. That team was tanky as anything. Um, I don't think this team had sheep. So got quite lucky there. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is actually sheep their threat. Um, and we managed to get the strip as well. I mean, obviously, our man's been one of the most broken things in the game. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to buff up the squad, that crit rate, that speed, the crit damage. I mean, that's just going to be insane on Rotos. And then the next thing is we're just going to open up with that A2. Let's put it on one time speed. Let's watch the damage. Look at that. Oh, 60k, 90k, big hit, boys. Um, only problem with this, though, and also we get that extra turn as well. So now we can literally just pop off the A1. And we're going to go for um, oh my Death Knight. If you remember, the A1, if um, they got less than 50% HP, it becomes an AoE as well. Look at that. Pow. And then Roto's just to finish him off. There we go. See you later, buddy. There, you just got sat. So let's just whack an auto. But the problem here is that he's thrown out decreased defense as well as HP burns. And like higher up in arena, polymorph is everywhere and it we will get wrecked. Simple as. Um, so it's really difficult. In some situations, he is amazing. He's god tier. But in other ways, he is his own worst enemy. And he's going to eat sheeps all day, like here. Um, and oh, what's her name? It's been so. Uh, Anacor? Uh, Acorn? Whatever her name is. I mean, she had polymorph. We got lucky. There wasn't a six star, but we could have easily gone sheeped. And that's an issue. That is an issue. All right, guys. So we're team number three. Um, full stone skin across the board and we're going to boost our turn meter and i love this team comp um arbiter and armands obviously armands is just great like absolute god tier literally just puts everyone like in their place what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually take out ronda first and then again we're going to buff up with our damage we're going to switch forms so actually i could Put unkillable on us and taunt that would be amazing against a different team obviously our mans can strip but if he didn't strip 
Um, that would be a good move. Um, obviously, it gives us survivability. It means that they've got two turns to try and kill us. But of course, we're going to open up with the A2 again. Just watch the damage. Kaboom! 150k on our man's. Like, what a boss. And actually, let's let's use Taunt. And we're going to throw uh, pain, pain Link on Ronda as well. That's interesting. That's a very interesting thing that they've done. So they've actually programmed this so that Duchess uses her revive on her second turn. No, didn't didn't land the um the reduction. But yeah, we've still got um unkillable and we've got uh, ally protection as well. So hopefully, well actually Ronda's going to kill theirs before ours, which is great. And this is an easy W. So I, re I, as like for Arena, I do think he's a beast. But at the same time, he can he causes a lot of issues. It's a real shame. I'm with this. Like I'm in two mindsets. I'm like, would it be better to remove decreased defense and just have him hit hard? And probably well, Pain Link actually with Pain Link you can control it. So it's not such a big issue. Um, so for Arena, I really want to rate him highly. But at the same time, with Polymorph in the mix, it can mess things up very, very easily. So it, it is difficult. Um, I mean, I'm going to show you what he's like in Hydra as well. So um, personally, I think he's a little bit um, underwhelming. So we'll scroll down. I think my team's right down here at the bottom. So this was a full manual team with Gizmark. And maybe I'm not using the best support champions, but he only did 11 mil damage on Brutal, not even Nightmare. And I just think, obviously, we've got to take into fact that he doesn't have his full awakening yet or, you know, four star awakening above. So he is missing a lot of damage. Um, he's missing HP as well, which buffs up his damage. So it is difficult. I do feel though, um, you know, if I'm bringing a mythical champion into Hydra, I feel that I should be able to just have a full auto team, no manual in, and he's not bringing that. He's not bringing that to the table. We're not getting the full, full auto. And yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit underwhelmed to be honest. He's fun. He's interesting. Of course, he's probably amazing other piece of content, but you know, there's loads of champions that can probably do all of that already. So I just wanted to see what he's like in Endgame Hydra and Arena. And honestly, I do feel like he is very underwhelming. So, I mean, I'd still be pretty pumped, but he's not the best mythical champion out there. Still pretty cool, though. Um, but yeah, if I was going to give him, like, for Arena, probably a 4 out of 5 for offense... Defense, probably a three out of five, just because if anyone's got any sort of brains, they're going to bring in Polymorph, they're going to bring in Stone Skin, and he will be completely redundant. He won't he won't get a turn. And then for Hydra, I'll probably go through a three out of five as well, because there's epics that can do way more damage um, than he can. He does bring some nice debuffs as well, and he is a HP burn champion. But... There's, I just feel like there's way better options than him. So that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.